Hey friend, welcome back to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. On today's episode, I wanted to start out with a question. I was wondering, have you noticed that as you're building your business, that emotions seem to be rising up that you didn't even realize you needed to deal with? I know for me, they have. As an entrepreneur, we cannot discount the importance of the inner work when it comes to growing our businesses. When you are in the business of supporting others as we are, it's important to continue to do the work on yourself. When you grow, your business will also. I know a lot of times when we think that we're stuck, we think it's because of the outer work. And it's not. A lot of times it is connected to the inner work. What do I mean by these two things? Well, doing the inner work in your business looks like aligning your work with your true skills and talents, getting clear on your why, working through mindset blocks like imposter syndrome or perfectionism, believing that you are worthy of the success you desire, being able to detach yourself from the outcome and truly trust yourself, managing the fear of being seen, And then doing the outer work in your business looks like having a good user-friendly website and branding, clearly communicating what you do with effective copy, creating compelling offers that serve your ideal clients, having a marketing strategy that supports your business goals, setting up your business properly, both legally and financially, and taking action to put yourself out there to grow your business. While both of these are equally important because you have to have the website, you have to have all of the foundational pieces for the outer parts of growing your business. We also as entrepreneurs need to focus on the inner work because it is just as important. Many people start a business thinking they need to nail all the specifics of the outer work only. Because we do want a website, a logo, and a social media following. But we get so focused on the quote-unquote how-to information and all the steps to start our businesses. And then we get into it and the inner stuff starts coming up. Like if you've created a website, but now you feel scared to hit publish. Or you have an Instagram account, but you are afraid to hit share. Or you know your ideal clients, but you expect to attract them just through pure luck. This is so common, and it happens to all of us. In today's episode, we talk about the importance of the inner work and how you can get unstuck in your business by working on yourself. Listen, sister, there have been multiple times when I would be helping a client and realize that I was the one getting triggered. Or I would spend my days thinking if I could just post more on social media, then I'll get more clients. As a business owner, we must first learn to be honest with ourselves, which I get it. It's hard to do, but it is essential to having a successful business and a happy life. Today, I have a conversation with one of my community members, Trisha Malice. So we took the opportunity to talk about the things that we have both learned on our journey. If you are finding yourself stuck on your emotional journey or your entrepreneurial journey, please go to ProOrganizersCoach.com and set up an unstuck session with me so that way we can get you back on track. As you know, my heart is to help you reach your highest potential professionally and personally because as today's episode reveals, It is all connected to your success. All right, girl, you ready to do this? Let's get on with the episode. You are listening to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. I'm Samantha Brown, a professional organizer and business coach. In this podcast, you will learn how to start and scale the organizing business of your dreams. So let's jump in. So it seems like the girls are starting to get to that place in their business, which we've all been there, where our emotions start to hinder our growth and we start to have to do the inner work before we start actually getting the clients. It doesn't take long because once you stop focusing on all the um, busy work stuff, the setting up a website and doing all of those things, yeah. Emotions now have room to come in, and if you're not prepared for them, then they can get really ugly really fast. 
and cause you to stop doing what you're doing. Just quit because it's easy, it feels easier than the alternative. Taking a step forward right into that stuff. Yeah. And that's what I was telling the girls this morning is I was telling them, I'm like, I'm so proud of you that you're choosing to continue and like get over these humps because right where you're feeling and like all the feels you're feeling right now is where a lot of people stop. Yeah. A lot of people quit. I think that's the um, Achilles heel for most entrepreneurs. And that it's kind of really the moment that you find out what you're made of. Mm -hmm. Like the moment you find out whether you have the courage to move forward. And basically that's all it comes down to. I was listening to uh, Mel Robbins this morning on her podcast and she kind of put a different spin on confidence um, because everybody says they don't feel confident. But her spin and her definition is confidence is um, basically the ability to try, like just trying, right? You get confidence by trying. And even though it's scary, even though it's it's maybe terrifying or you feel really um, shameful or whatever it is, just taking an action is how confidence is, is created. It's not a feeling. It's a thing. And it's a skill. You have to learn how to be confident, right? And that skill is taking action, which is what I feel like I've been doing this last week. So, well, the last few weeks, even though it's really scary, even though it's really terrifying, it's just like stepping into it no matter what, just doing it anyway. And uh, that's how you learn, right? So like her way is like, every time you try, you're learning, you're growing, you're expanding. It may not work out but that's okay. Cause that's a lesson, right? So instead of beating yourself up, like I'm going to, I'm working on a live for next week about going down the deep, dark rabbit hole of uh, failure. You tried something new, you failure at the bottom of this deep, dark hole with all these deep, dark emotions, like, you know, self-loathing, self-doubt, shame, fear, and you have a choice. You have a choice to sit there with them in the dark, or you have the choice to stand up and take another step forward anyway. But so I would love to like dive into that because literally it's come up like five people in the past like two days have been talking about how they're in that place. Yeah, I think more people than not are in that place. Um, yes. Some are willing to talk about it and some aren't ready to talk about it. So yeah. Yeah. And then um, one of the girls had even mentioned how she didn't want to come to a group. She had been kind of avoiding our group coaching sessions because she said they were making her feel like everyone else was succeeding. You know, so I made sure to, to tell them this morning, I'm like, no, this right here where we're getting honest and real with who we are. This is what I want for our groups. Like, this is what I want. So, you know, you're not alone because we're all going through the exact same thing. Like as an entrepreneur, like it should, you know, it should say somewhere or there should be some kind of like, you know, in little lettering, uh, you will be dealing with your own junk along the way. <laughs> or or you have to deal with your own junk along the way, because if you don't, it's always going to keep showing up. It's It will. It'll just show up. It's inevitable that it's going to be a trigger of some sort will show up while you're doing your job. And it's going to take you by surprise if you're not prepared for it. Right. So, yep. A part of this whole journey is learning how to get prepared for that, right? So kind of that awareness is a huge thing. I always call awareness our lifeboat because it really is. Because when you become aware of how you're feeling, what you're thinking, those beliefs you have, when you become aware of them, you can't become unaware of them again. <laughs> They're there. So you climb into that lifeboat. And it's going to take you into that really scary uh, journey, but in the end, it's going to save you, right? Absolutely. Well, and it's exactly what you said, where it will continue to show up. So like, okay, maybe I should quit wanting to be a professional organizer or quit this cleaning business because I can't deal with my own stuff. Oh, okay. Well, you may be pausing it for a moment, but then all of a sudden it's showing up at home with your kids or it's showing up, you know, in your marriage. It follows you because it's a part of you. It is. It's a part of you. And it's, in my view, I mean, it, depending on what you believe, for me, it's the universe is like throwing stones at me. Like, hello, wake up. 
it's time to pay attention to mm-hmm. what why you're feeling like this. Like, where is that coming from? What is triggering you right now? And why is that triggering you? And it's really, really important. And what I've I've spent a lot, a lot of my last few years with this whole entrepreneurship stuff, avoiding all that stuff. And it came to roost for me a few months ago and it was deep and it was dark and it was ugly. And I had that choice, right? I had the choice to sit in the dark with it. And I chose to do that for a while. And then I also um, was able to figure out that I could take, I had a choice to take steps forward, little steps, baby steps. And every time that I take a step forward, something, some sort of breakthrough happens for me, you know, that like Brene Brown calls it, it's not a breakdown, it's a it's a breakthrough, right? A spiritual breakthrough or an emotional breakthrough. It's not a breakdown. And it feels like a breakdown. Believe me, it's pretty ugly. <laughs> but um, as I look back at all the steps that I've taken, I can see how far I've come. And I'm in that lifeboat now and I feel more secure in that lifeboat because I have the awareness. It's pretty scary at first, but you know what? It gets better. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it it takes the heaviness off of because a lot of the issues we deal with, or at least for me personally, and from what I've seen, a lot of them are are self thoughts. They're the stuff that we think about ourselves. It's It has nothing to do with anyone else. It's literally you know, well, I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or I'm not, it's it's the eyes. Something I've learned along the way is also trying to figure out, is this my stuff or is this something that's been spoken over me that I chose to accept that really never belonged to me in the first place? It was actually the stuff my dad was dealing with or the stuff my mom was dealing with, you know, or whoever. But as a kid growing up, it was either said so many times or whatever it was mm-hmm. where, you know, I grew up believing that that was true about myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a huge uh, learning for myself in the last little while. And it's also something that I am taking into my own business now as a part of it, because I realized that that stuff that we carry with us often is stuff that we've either been taught, told, you know, and over the years learned to believe it. And when you start to recognize that those are other people's things that you've been carrying around with you, it's kind of like the physical stuff, right? Those, those sentimental items that you're holding on to because someone told you it's super important for you to hold on to this. <laughs> you don't even know the person it belonged to originally, maybe, or you don't. <laughs> No, you don't really know what the reason is you're holding on to it is um, that realization that that's not my stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm holding on to someone else's attachment or emotion or belief or whatever it might be. And I'm holding on to that and I've taken it on as my own. So why am I holding on to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And honestly, like, you know, it makes me, it's so funny. It makes me think of this um, toy chest I had when the kids were little that had been passed down through my husband's generations. And at first this thing was like, kind of like, kind of cool. It was wooden. It turned into a desk and then went back and was like a a bench and it had a toy chest. So it was great for a, a season, but then we hit the season of, okay, this is just getting in the way. This is very annoying. It takes up a lot of space and I'm afraid my kids are going to bust their head open because it's solid wood. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, time to get rid of it. Well, then it became, uh oh, well, now how do I get rid of it? Like, I've, I've realized I don't want this thing anymore. But then I start asking and it's like, well, no one else wants this thing either. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's kind of a, a good metaphor for deciding what we want to get rid of and like how to release it, you know, because. We all get stuck in that place of, oh my gosh, I have this. I'm aware of it now, but I've been holding on to it for so long that it's actually become my own. And it's really like back to the awareness lifeboat. If you're not really aware um, that it belongs to someone else, 
then it does become yours, right? It absolutely is yours and you're carrying it around like this giant weight, a sack of potatoes over your shoulder all the time. And when you get in that lifeboat and you start to do the work, the hard work and the slogging through all of the crap and (laughs) all that stuff, when you start to do the hard work, You realize that, hey, I can really just set these potatoes down now because they're not mine to carry. I'm not carrying your stuff anymore. And you're allowed to do that. Yes, it's hard. It's hard to tell someone that, you know, I don't want that. I don't want this desk anymore. Mm -hmm. Because, (laughs) you know, it feels like you're hurting someone's feelings. And you And at the same time, that's theirs. That's Mm -hmm. theirs. So even if they're snarky about it, even if they have a, a bad reaction to it, that's their way of dealing with their emotions, good or bad. It's not yours to carry. So, you know, that's the other thing that happens, I think, a lot, too, is that we try to set those boundaries and set down the things that we're carrying. And then we start carrying the other person's anger and hurt in, in you know, to replace <laughs> the item that you were carrying around before. And so... The, uh, learning how to set really good, clear boundaries too is a part of the process in this too. So there's the, you know, doing that work and dealing with your own stuff and figuring out like weeding out what's yours, what's not. It's all part of that lovely process of having your own business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people that start their own businesses, you know, like from the beginning, you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a business. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make money. Like you think of all those things. But you don't think of the fact that like, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, you are on a journey of like healing yourself along the way. And if you're not ready for that side of the journey, you're absolutely not necessarily ready to own a business because they really do go hand in hand, especially when as professional organizers, we are going in and we are helping other people with their stuff. We have to be able to leave our stuff at the door before we walk in to even help them. But we also have to make sure we're not dragging their stuff home with us. Exactly. And it, it's hard. It is. It's really hard. And and that's when the triggers start to come up. Mm-hmm. They show up when, when you're in situations like that where you're, if you haven't done the work healing yourself, if you're not in your awareness lifeboat, um, you could easily be triggered by one of your clients, um, by whatever it is, is happening in their life. And if you aren't prepared for that to happen, then it can become a sticking point. It can make you not want to work with that person anymore. It can make you want to step away. And, uh, you have to really start to ask yourself the hard questions like, what is it that made me feel that way? Why am I feeling like this anger right now? Or why am I feeling like I want to cry? Why? What's happening? What just happened? And where do you think that came from? And being prepared is going to give you the ability to do that in the moment. As you're first working up to it, it's something that you may have to take with you and look at it after you're done your session or whatever it is. But don't forget about it. Don't just lay it to the side. Don't ignore it because when you ignore it, believe me, when you ignore it, it will show up again as a even harder slap in the face at another inappropriate time, (laughs) probably even more inappropriate. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Keep coming to remind you it's there. (laughs) Yeah. Because you've not dealt with it yet. Yeah. And honestly, that episode we did, um, I think it was. I'm trying to remember the number of the episode, but it's the let go framework was the episode we did on, on pro organizers coach. And so, um, you know, I, that's why I loved that framework because it helped give you something to look at and something to, to, okay, well, now that I've, I've been triggered now that I've figured out like, oh my gosh, okay, something's happening. I'm not sure what's happening, but I know something's happening here. You know, and you become aware of, okay, I'm aware now. Now what? You know, and that's why I love that framework is because the let go framework literally takes you step by step of how you can actually let go of those things, you know, 
And then there's also all of these other ways. There's, you know, working with a coach, there's um, journaling, like all of us have our own ways that, that we process things. For me, I go, I have a spot up near my house that I go and, you know, I spend time with God and I just like spend time with my own thoughts without all, you know, I turn my phone off. I like, I have no distractions because I think a lot of times we allow ourselves to get so stressed by everything and all the chaos and all the stuff going on around us. But when's the last time we've taken a moment to sit with ourselves? Yeah, that's, um, I posted today. It's really funny that you brought that up because my post today for when, uh, international women's day was a question. And the question was, when was the last time you showed yourself kindness? Mm. And really, as I went on to say, if you're like most women, it's like not often, if ever. And it's because we don't know how. We don't know how to show ourselves uh, self-compassion and kindness because the other women in our lives probably don't know how to do it either. So they weren't able to teach us. And so, yeah, we spend all this time doing for others living for others and putting ourselves last it's if you want to put it in um, context of being an entrepreneur and having your own business when you're giving to everyone else and you're living for everyone else you can't possibly put the time and effort and energy into your business because you don't know how to do that for yourself So you have to learn how to be kind to yourself and show yourself compassion. And that is how you do your business for you because your business has to be for you. And I can tell you my biggest learning in this last um, few weeks has been that when I try to force a message that's not mine, that's not my authentic vision It never feels right. It always feels like I'm chasing something that doesn't exist, but I keep chasing it even though it's not there and I can't ever grab it because it's not real. And once I started to just allow myself to say what was on my heart and in my mind and just say it the way that I would say it, surprisingly things are starting to change for me and my business because now I get to be who I am. And yes, I'm still struggling with a little bit of that, the vulnerability and, and showing more of myself. But each time I do it, it's like that building of the confidence thing. Each time I take one of those little tiny steps that gets me closer to that confidence and the knowledge and the knowing how to do it and just feeling good about what I'm putting out there. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like, you know, it's the, the whole kindness thing for women as an entrepreneur is making me think of, you know, especially when you start a business that you're working from home, you know, all of the back end stuff is you working from home because, you know, whether you're a mom or a daughter or a sister or whatever you are, you end up almost feeling guilt about taking time in your office or, where in your car, which I've done many a times or in the closet, like wherever you are trying to build your business, you know, we end up feeling guilty like, oh, but I should be doing this or I should be doing that or, you know, for all these other people. And I heard it said, and I think I've said it before on the podcast, but it was so good. I have to repeat it. So I'd heard it said, and I forget who said it, but she was talking about your teacup and how all of us try to give to others from our teacup. But our teacup should be overflowing so full that we have enough to give to everyone else out of our saucer. Yeah. And that that's the only way we're good enough for anyone. Because if we're giving from our teacup, we are going to be depleted. But if we're giving from our saucer, it's because we are overflowing so much. And there's so much overflow from who we are on the inside and who we are becoming yeah. That they are just naturally taken care of. I love that. That's a really great visual because I'm a visual person. I love, I love mm-hmm. visual ideas. <laughs> and, uh, 
Yeah. And, 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 and what I would add to that is that in order for us to be so full that our saucer is full too, is coming from us inside of you. So that's something that you get to do for yourself. It's not selfish. Mm-hmm. People, and I've been saying this since I became a mom is selfish is not a bad word. Selfless is the where we get ourselves into trouble. When we're mm-hmm. selfless, we're doing for others all the time. And in society, that's kind of celebrated. When you do for others, when you're a mom, you should be doing everything for your kids. You should be tired all the time. You should be like, you know, badge of honor. In reality, being selfish is how you can do for others. Like you said, from your saucer instead of from your cup, because you're right. If you keep taking from that cup. You're never giving back to yourself. So I would, I would add to that, that the cup being empty is being selfless and the cup overflowing is being selfish. You're still sharing yourself, but not in a way that it depletes you and makes you tired and takes everything away from you. Yeah. Well, because when we're no good, like I heard it said also one time that as women, we're the thermostats of our home. And it's true. And as business owners, we're the thermostat of our business. And so whatever mood we're in or however we're feeling or or whatever's going on on the inside for us, that's why it doesn't work when we're putting stuff out, when we're coming from a place of stress and anxiety and and feeling like I've got to and I have to, and it's a to-do list. And, you know, but when, when we can come from a place of I really just want to help people, but it's because I know how worthy I am to help those people. And I, I've i done my own healing because that's what this all comes back down to is, you know, being able to look at ourselves and have an honest um, analysis of ourself. And on a scale of one to 10, how healed are we from all of our junk? Because if we all took a moment and thought about it, we would know truly, like, you know, how healed am I? And even for me, just, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, like it wasn't that long ago. Honestly, I would have been like a two or three out of 10. Like if 10 is healed, I was like a two. (laughs) But through starting my businesses, I had to learn real quick how to, you know, hire a coach, how to get my own healing done, how to walk these steps to, to help myself. And now I would say I'm closer to like, you know, a seven or an eight. I I don't have it all figured out, but I have more better days than I did do bad days. So to me, that's good. (laughs) That's a win. I like that. That's that's a win. And that's why with, with my let go format, um, what I've come up with, that's why I put love first is because it really does all start within yourself, right? It's about not only just healing, but just understanding who you are and what you want. Like, that's a big question that I've been asking people is like, what do you want? It's not out of judgment. It's not like, what do you want? It's <laughs> like, what do you want? Because if you don't know what you want, you can't really make any changes to go for it, right? So. Yeah, and, and and feeding back to your like healing piece. Um, yeah, it actually was in the past couple of months that I had this breakthrough realization that I had been carrying uh the trauma of the fact that I had postpartum when my boys were born. And I it was a really, really, really hard time for our family. It was a hard time for me and it was hard for my husband. And I was carrying this guilt that I had done this to him because I, and that I wasn't a really great mom back then because I just didn't have the capacity. And my postpartum turned into a major depression for five years. For the first five years of my children's life, I wasn't fully present because I couldn't be. Mm-hmm. And it was just recently that I realized that that was something I had never thought of as a trauma before. And once I was able to kind of go, that was a trauma. It was very traumatizing for all of us. 
And I am now able to kind of start laying it down and stop carrying it as a trauma. It's something that happened. It was traumatizing. And I'm not in that space anymore. I'm not there. So that's part of that healing. And that's part of that love piece of giving myself the space to feel it, to name it, and to lay it down and make the change. So that's what, you know, it's taken me time. And like you said, I'm not, I'm not nowhere, but I mean, it, things are going to come up. Trauma's mm-hmm. going to happen. You're going to get triggered. You're going to, things are going to come up. The difference now for me is, is that I'm able to see what's going on. I'm able to sit with the feelings, get curious about where they're coming from, name them, which is big because most of us don't know how to name our big emotions. And I'm, I'm able to actually see how that's affecting everything else, including my business. That trauma that I was carrying and not naming it trauma was showing up with me being afraid to be vulnerable because that's scary because when I was really super vulnerable, I wasn't believed back then. I wasn't, I wasn't able to name it back then. So yeah, I carried that fear with me, that fear of vulnerability. And so as I've uh, been able to lay it down, I've been able to be more vulnerable in what I put out in my business. Yeah. Which comes through as authentic, which people can feel, which, you know, and like, I, I don't know how you lived with that for five years when the, I had postpartum with my son and, but it was a shorter postpartum, but I honestly thought that like everyone was out to kill me. Like, I mean, it was, it was some intense like time in my life where I, I mean, I seriously like thought people were trying to steal my son from me. Like, I mean, it was bad. And, you know, looking back on it now, I mean, I guess I've never even looked at it that way either of just like being able to, to look at it kind of the way we would give someone else compassion about something like that. Why can we not do the same for ourselves? Yeah. Right. And we don't because we're not taught how to do that. It's that question of when was the last time you showed yourself kindness? Mm -hmm. You spend so much time being afraid of asking for help because you're fearful that you're going to be judged or there's going to be some sort of blowback, right? Somebody's going to say something negative. You ask for help. Why can't you do it by yourself? You know, I didn't, I didn't suffer as, as much in my postpartum about uh, from the paranoid thing for me it was more like my life felt so out of control i would always say it was like i was standing in the in the eye of a tornado and my entire life was just spinning so fast around me and i could not grab onto anything solid i always felt like i was on unsolid ground and that went on for five years. I always felt like there was this giant hole inside of me and I could never fill it with anything. And um, that part, even though I got better, that piece, that idea that I could never, everything was out of control. I had to control everything in order for life to feel secure and safe. Mm-hmm. I carried that with me and that's what I was doing in my business, right? So yeah, it's, it's absolutely an important piece to show yourself compassion because if a friend told you that, <laughs> would you say to yourself, Oh my God, you need to just control everything in your life because if you don't, you're not going to feel safe. You should just go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do that, right? To a friend, you would go, Oh my gosh, that's horrible. That's terrible that you went through that. I'm so sorry that happened. How can I help you? Right? Yeah. But we don't do that for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Ever. 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 And so when I started to do this for myself, at first, of course, it feels really awkward and weird. It's like, what are you doing? Like talking to yourself like that. But then I'm slowly noticing that as I do that, it just feels so much better. And I actually feel like I don't have to control every single aspect of every minute of every day anymore. I can just allow it to happen, Mm. which is how life should be. 
because life is messy. Life is ugly sometimes. It's, it's, you know, but it's also beautiful at the same time. Like there's, uh, there's this beauty and messiness that is supposed to happen. And when you try to control all of that, you really actually take the beauty out of it too, because you're missing it all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're squashing everything because you're so busy trying to keep the control and trying to make sure everything's perfect. And, and like, you can't see anything outside of your own thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us real quick, your let go framework. We got L for love. Tell us E. E is for energy. So it's basically an exploration of where your energy is going. Like, are you putting energy and trying to control everything? And how can we change that? And what kind of energy do you want in your business, in your life? So how can we work into that? And then uh, T is for time. Again, an exploration of how do you want to spend your time? Like, do you want to spend your time constantly trying to create something that doesn't actually work for you? Or in the case of decluttering and stuff, do you want to spend your time moving clutter around all the time? Is that what you're doing? Because you're not organizing if that's what you're doing. Uh, G is giveaway. So what can you give away? What are you carrying? Like we just talked about, what are you carrying? That's not yours. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the case of, of clutter, what items have you been holding on to because somebody else had an emotion attached to it that now you're carrying as your own? And in business, what things like, was there something in your past that maybe is affecting what you're doing right now? Like my trauma of postpartum and that, that need to control for safety. And how can you give that away or put it down? And the last one is organize, which can be organizing your stuff or organizing your life, prioritizing the things that are really important to you, learning how to be more um, vulnerable be okay with that and organizing those beliefs in a way that's like, is this my thought, my vision, my voice, or is this someone else's and how to kind of start to tell the difference between those things. Yeah. I think that's the beautiful. I use it all the time. I love it. Um, I use it with my clients. I use it with my own thoughts. Like I just, I love that framework and you know, also with the, on the vulnerable piece, I'd love to talk about that for just a minute because that's what started our conversation today was, you know, learning how to be vulnerable with ourselves. But, you know, when you add this layer of clients, like you're, you're going in and you're doing, you know, consultations or you're doing the sessions and you're working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, learning how to be like, we want them to be vulnerable with us and, and let us help them release their stuff. What I've learned in my experience is I have to be able to be vulnerable first. Because if I go into their home and I am standoffish, I'm, you know, whatever I am, they are not going to open up. But if I can look at them and say, you know, oh my gosh, don't worry. Like you should see my own house or, you know, kind of make light of it a little bit. If it's like, especially the consultation, because I've literally had a woman stand in front of her door and like block the door because she didn't want me to go in and see the mess. She was so ashamed. And I actually am, am in the process of trying to convince her to come on the podcast because I think it would be amazing for her to share from a client's perspective what it's like to work with an organizer. Because I think a lot of us need to remember when we're going in and working with clients, they are so lost in the weeds, at least 80% of them. You know, some of them just need you to come in and make it Pinterest perfect. Okay, that's fine. That That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here are the ones that they've been living in such a way for so long, they don't know how to get out of it, but they're ready to get out of it. But they need help. But if with whatever energy we come in with, that's going to let them know, can I trust this person? Can I be open with this person? And then there on top of that, the more we know ourselves and can be open and honest with them about who we are. Now, don't go telling them, you know, 
intimate stories between you and your husband or, you know, like don't go too, you know, you know, you got to keep that boundary line, but I, you know, and, and go, that goes back to the boundary thing too. There's a thin line between helping them feel like you're at least somewhat of, of a confidant, maybe not a friend, but like a confidant or a therapist or, you know, someone that they can, can speak with and know that this is going to be confidential and that they're not going to be judged. I don't know how often I say that. And I even just had a lady call me last night and, you know, we were talking and she's like, I was so afraid to call anyone because I'm just so embarrassed by the way my, my house has gotten, but she's got a bunch of young kids running around. And I'm like, girl, listen, like I've got teenagers and mine still looks like that. Like we got this, like, just let me come. We'll, we'll knock a room out. We'll see how you feel. And I even advised her. Let's start with your office so you have a place that you can go and it can feel calm and then we'll worry about your kids. And do you know, she felt guilt about that in the middle of that conversation. She was like, are you me? Why would we focus on me first? She said, wouldn't that make me a bad mom? Shouldn't I focus on my kids first? Yeah. Yeah. That's like going back to my post when, you know, that whole asking for help is a weakness and the fear of being judged or um made fun of because you ha- can't do it yourself right that's that's a thing i noticed it lots in moms but it, it happens a lot in women in general yes that feeling of like if i if i ask for help then there there's going to be something there's something wrong with me right so uh the one thing that i i i want to remind everyone that you know when you start to, when you start to do like, who's my dream client, your dream client is you yesterday, right? So if you are setting such strict boundaries where you're not actually sharing any of your life with them, then how are they going to be able to know, like, and trust you? They can't, right? So boundaries are important. Like, hey, you can't call me in the middle of the night. I'm not answering my emails until, you know, the next business day, blah, 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 whatever your boundaries are. Um, But if you also have like these really, really tight, tough boundaries on like, I'm never sharing a single thing about myself. I'm coming in. We're just going to do it. We're going to get it done and I'm leaving. And there it is. That is really clinical. And most people don't respond to clinical, right? You know, when you go to a doctor who is like really stiff and matter of fact, usually they come across as arrogant and rude and, you know, they're never, they don't feel caring, right? And you don't really want to go back to them. Yeah. Well, and it's the same with your home. Like that is, is the exact Mm -hmm. same thing of, I don't let, let half of my family members come to my house. The idea of calling a stranger on the phone and being like, hey, can you come help me go through my panty drawer? <laughs> right. It's, vulnerability. It's, it's the same thing as standing naked in front of a crowded room. Right. The same kind of feeling, right? Our brain doesn't know the difference between excitement and anxiety, really. They feel the same in our brain and in our bodies sometimes, right? So, yeah, when we don't trust someone, being vulnerable with that person we don't know them we 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 don't know that we can trust them yet it feels really unsafe and so of course what's the first thing we're going to do we're going to stand in front of the door like your client we're going to be like no no you can't (laughs) you're scary so when you're coming in to help someone that that compassion that you're showing to them if you're showing it to yourself Again, you're going to be able to help them from your saucer and you're going to be able to share because it's not going to feel so um, scary um, to be vulnerable with them. And I think vulnerability is also a skill like confidence that we have to learn that we're not taught because other people don't know the people in our lives don't know how to do it. They don't even really know how to name vulnerability when it's happening. They know, though, that when they are being vulnerable, they might not be able to know it's vulnerability, but when they are doing that, it feels really uncomfortable. And that's how you know, though, 
That's how you know you're doing vulnerability right. (laughs) It feels uncomfortable. Now, if it feels uncomfortable and awkward and you're blushing, perhaps you're sharing a little too much (laughs) in that moment. But if it's feeling a little uncomfortable in your head when they're talking and you're like, oh, I could share something with them, but I don't know if I really want to share it with them. I'm like, oh, it's kind of scary to say that out loud. Perhaps that's when you should say it out loud. Because that can put them at ease and make them know that they're not alone, like you said, because they're not alone. You know, for me to share my story of my postpartum is vulnerability at its finest. And believe me, I didn't talk a lot about it because I was afraid of that feeling because it was really uncomfortable. And yes, I had to do some healing to get there to share that story. But now sharing that story is how I let other people know they're not alone. I was there too. I know what that's like to be scared and alone, feel alone. And I can help you feel less alone. Yeah. What makes it easier for me to help you is because I know what that feels like. You know, a lot of us and a lot of the podcasts, which, you know, thank God for them because they helped me start my business. But a lot of them stick to what it's like as an organizer, what it's like as a business owner. And I want those things for for everyone listening too. But I also think it's super important to remember from the client's perspective, how they are feeling. And I think it's super important also then for us to figure out how we are feeling on the inside, because a lot of people don't go into the emotional side of business owning. And so I think that, you know, this was a very well-timed conversation that needed to be had that I can now take, make sure it goes out on the air, but back it with some of the stuff that I learned as I was becoming a life coach of some of these like tips and tricks and, and just things to think about as a human being helping another human being. Yeah. Cause that's what it comes down to, right? It's humans helping humans. And We aren't perfect. We're not meant to be perfect. Like I mentioned before, life is messy and it can get ugly. And when we approach each other um, on that level of being human beings from one human being to another, when we approach each other that way, it becomes a little easier to be vulnerable with each other because we stop seeing each other as these... um, perfect beings. Oh my gosh, your life. We stop comparing, I guess is what I want to say. Because comparison is exactly how we get down that deep, dark hole with those deep, dark emotions. As soon as you start to compare, you can guarantee that's where you're going to end up. And then all of a sudden, that other person isn't a human being to us anymore. We don't see them on that level. And it's way easier to be judging and to be mean to someone that you don't see as a human. Right? Yeah. Whether that's in your intention or not, your energy yeah. is going to come off that way. Yeah. And so when we're we're acting like we're afraid of each other, we can't be vulnerable in that moment. Right. Mm-hmm. So going into a business, any business, whether it's financial advisors or organizers or life coaches, if you go into it with a matter of fact, cut and dry, black and white kind of attitude. You're going to find yourself lost because human beings are just a big bundle of emotional vulnerability, messiness, and ugliness sometimes mixed with some joy and happiness, right? We have all this stuff. We are not cut and dry. We are not just one way. That's what makes it so cool is we're all so different. So if you can just kind of leave your stuff at the door and say, I'm going to help another fellow human being right now today. I am here to help you, you know, lay down some of your stuff. It's going to just be easier to be vulnerable with them. It's going to be easier to have that relationship. Yeah, we're not going to be best friends, but. We're going to have a relationship when you're working with someone, no matter how you're working with them, there's a relationship there. And if you, if they can't trust you or like you, then that relationship is going to be strained and it's not going to happen. So yeah, I love that human to human. That's what we do. And if they do decide they like you and 
those first few sessions go really good, then before you know it, you they're connected to you for life and they're telling all their friends and they're telling, you know, because anytime they have an issue, you are going to be their go-to person to call and be like, hey, I've got this thing going on. I need help. Or I have a sister or a friend or, a you know, word of mouth is is everything in this business. People think it's social media and marketing. It is word of mouth. Like I have had, I don't know how many organizers I've talked to that have been doing this for 15 years now. And they never once have even posted anything on social because they made sure that their clients felt taken care of and they went the extra mile and they were compassionate with them. Those are the people that have, they stay booked out 24 seven because word got out. Yeah. Well, and I just wrote this down because it just popped into my head while you were talking. Ultimately, it's about how you make them feel. That's what they're going to remember. They're not going to remember what you did, maybe necessarily, but they will remember how they felt when they were working with you or when they were talking to you or when they were in a session with you. They're going to remember that emotion and that's what they're sharing with other people. It's not what you did necessarily, right? That might come into it in the conversation, but for the most part, it's how they felt before, during, and after. And so if you go in there and human to human, they're going to feel a connection. And that's what we want as human beings is connection. We're hardwired for that, right? Our brains want that. We can't do this by ourselves. And so I, I really look at it this way is that instead of seeing asking for help as a weakness, I want people to understand, especially women, that when you ask for help, that's a strength. That's going to make you stronger. It makes all of us stronger. Yeah. Yeah. And if uh, just FYI, any of you that are listening, if you are dealing with emotions and you are looking for someone that is fantastic at just having a conversation and just helping you look at your stuff, that would be Miss Trisha Malice. So, but yeah, we'll put all of the links in the show notes because I, I want people to know how fantastic you are. I want to say I love you and thank you. That's just, it just makes me want to cry. It makes my heart sing because I love what I, what I do and I love helping other women find their own voices and their vision and just be able to name their emotions and, and be able to become their authentic self, whatever that is. I love it when I see someone get it and just go, yeah, I get to be me. This is okay. Right. So thank you for saying all your lovely words. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just as we're winding down, I just wanted to say real quick that, you know, if you are needing to work on your own personal, emotional sanity, trauma, all the things, then Trish is your person. If you're needing to work on the business side of things and like, okay, well, I'm starting to build my business, but I'm not really sure how this is working or that is working. But you also need like a lot of my clients that I do one on one, we still go over some stuff that is emotional sometimes for the business because it matters. Like if you've had a consultation and you're like, okay, I walked away from that. That didn't feel good. I'm not really sure what happened, why it happened, where I went wrong then I'm your girl. But either way, whatever you're dealing with, we've got you covered and the links will be in the show notes below. And we are both inside of the Pro Organizers Coach community membership. So if you're thinking about joining that, make sure to go do that, please. And Trisha, I thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thanks. This has been great. I love our conversations. They're always uh, really informative and they just make me feel good at the end of me too. I've been spending the day like skipping through the rest of my day because I had a conversation with you. <laughs> I know that's how I'm feeling right now too. Yeah. So I can do anything. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much. You have been listening to the Pro Organizers Coach podcast. Go to the show notes to find all of the links mentioned in this episode and hit that subscribe and automatic download button so you don't miss a single thing. Thanks for listening.